Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing really well. So this past week when I'm filming, it probably isn't going up at the time that I'm filming, but this past week it has been my birthday. I turned 29 and in the grand tradition of booktube, maybe I shouldn't put the blame on booktube, maybe it's just my own irresponsible book buying. I have bought some books over March. I've received some, which has been very lovely. And so as I do every year, it's time to show you these books. And yes, as I say, there's a combination of things that I picked up myself this month, as well as lovely gifts from my friends and family. So without much further ado, let's just get straight into these books. Especially because it's history of fun, I was wanting to get quite a few women's history related books, so that is reflected here. But the first book I have to show you today that I picked up in March is actually not related to that at all. It is What Was Shakespeare Really Like by Stanley Wells. This is a book that I'd seen floating around in bookshops and thought, oh that sounds interesting, probably won't pick it up. However, I've mentioned previously that I am working on a little Shakespeare project on the side, something that I would like to get the video for in in April when it's Shakespeare's birthday and this book just matched so perfectly well with the concept I have for this video that I had to pick it up. I read it very very quickly and it's just really interesting reflections, analysis of what we can glean about Shakespeare's personality from the very little that we have of evidence for him. Stanley Wells is looking at his plays and his sonnets but he's also looking at the few sparse historical records that we do have for him to kind of see can we craft a personality onto Shakespeare and I really enjoy this. This is clearly somebody who has been studying Shakespeare for such a long time, collating all of his sources, and presents a pretty even-handed, I would say, depiction of him, and I really enjoyed reading this. Next book that I picked up for myself was Blue Stockings, The First Woman's Movement by Susanna Gibson, looking at the 18th century salons, figures like Elizabeth Montague, Anne Yearsley, Hester Frail, Fanny Burney, among many other authors, artists, and thinkers, women and men coming together in these literary salons to talk about their intellectual pursuits and ideas. Years. Yes, definitely reserved mostly for middle to upper class women, very privileged women who were able to get the education and also the time to just sit around in their salons and talk, but also is a history that I feel like not enough people talk about. I feel like whenever I've seen people talk about blue stockings, it's been more about the 19th and 20th century intellectual women, but there's this whole earlier period in the 18th century where this was going on, which then ended up being demonised in later centuries and therefore put on the back burner. Kind of the same thing happened with figures like Mary Wollstonecraft. They weren't seen as respectable and therefore people just didn't talk about them because they wanted to forget. And so yeah, I'm really glad that there is a new popular history about these women, both the good and the bad that they got up to. I have been on a little kick to pick up some romance recently. I've not really read a whole lot of romance in 2024 and I definitely need to get back into it. One that I was kind of struggling whether or not I should pick this up right now, and obviously ultimately did decide to pick up, was Bride by Ali Hazelwood. I have read almost everything that Ali Hazelwood has has written. Ali Hazelwood is known mostly for writing contemporary romance based in STEM and as you can tell from the cover this takes a bit of a departure from that kind of romance. We're looking at a paranormal romance in which a vampire and a werewolf are being forced to marry by their families and I don't really know much aside from that. I've heard some kind of mixed reviews about this and I don't know how much of it is the book just not being great or how much of it is people just not expecting it of Ali Hazelwood. I'm trying to keep an open mind considering the fact that I don't generally read paranormal romance because it's Ali Hazelwood and I like her writing. I don't know what to expect. I'm a little anxious but I'm hoping for good things. And then I also picked up two Chloe Lee's books. I've seen a lot of people really enjoying her romances and so when I saw that she had a little modern day Shakespeare romance reimagining series I had to pick that up. I've had mixed results so far with the If Shakespeare Was an Anti series by Nisha Sharma. I really enjoyed Dating Dr. Dill but I was a little underwhelmed by Tastes Like Shakar. I am very much looking forward to the next book in the series though. And those were Taming of the Shrew and Much To Do About Nothing retellings and Chloe Lees is here doing the exact same thing. We have the first book which is Two Wrongs Make a Right which is, as I am aware, a Much Ado About Nothing retelling with everybody's favourite fake dating trope and then A Better Hate Than Never which is Taming of the Shrew. Apparently I just can't get enough of modern reimaginings of both of these stories so do let me know if you've read either of these and if you enjoy them. The last book that I picked up for myself was The Lady Elizabeth by Alison Weir. I realise I'm actually not that far off having read all of Alison Weir's historical fiction. It's going to take me a while to get through her non-fiction but I am I only have four books left to read of Alison Weir before I can say that I have read 
all of her historical fiction and you may have seen my Six Tudor Queens video where I was ranking all of her books in that series. I am very tempted therefore to kind of blitz through the rest of Alison Weir's back catalogue and also the newest book which is coming out in May, Mary the First Queen of Sorrows, in order to do like a definitive, in my mind, ranking of her books. And so when I saw the Lady Elizabeth in a charity shop I had to pick it up. Aside from this I also need to read Innocent Traitor, A Dangerous Inheritance and The Captive Queen. I think that's everything. And then I have read all of her historical fiction. Let me know if that is of interest to you. Um, but The Lady Elizabeth is an interesting one because I have actually read the sequel to this, The Marriage Game, which looks at Elizabeth I's reign and particularly her negotiations on the marriage market. But this actually looks at the events preceding her reign, going from the death of her mother Anne Boleyn up until presumably her sister Mary I dies. And I've always had a little bit of trepidation over her portrayal of Elizabeth because I'm pretty sure from reading her depiction of Catherine Parr and her depiction of Elizabeth in The Marriage Game that the way that she is going to characterise the relationship between Elizabeth I and Thomas Seymour is going to be like entirely consensual and like the young Elizabeth was pushing that relationship further, which I don't know, leaves a bit of an icky taste in my mouth. Considering, you know, she was like 13 years old when this much older man was pursuing her. I'd also been kind of put off from this because the marriage game I found to be quite episodic, but we'll see. I'm keeping an open mind. I really do hope to enjoy this, but there are just a, a couple of things, a couple of niggling things that are making me think, mm, I'm not sure if I'm going to enjoy this one, but the project continues. And then I have a little stack here of books that I received for my birthday from friends or books that I chose with book vouchers that my friend sent to me. The first of these birthday books came from Shaw over at Thoroughly Enjoyed Books and it is Messalina, The Life and Times of Rome's Most Scandalous Empress by Honor Cargill Martin. This is a book that I had seen when it was in hardback, heard so many good things about and was very tempted to pick up but I knew ultimately in my heart that I was never going to get round to it before the paperback came out. So I have been doing my waiting and here it is, look how beautiful it is. I am slowly but surely trying to close up the gap in my knowledge that is Roman Empire history and my way to do that evidently is through women's history. I have this book I have Emma Southern's History of the Roman Empire in 21 Women and yeah I'm looking forward to it. I know little bits and pieces about Messalina but it will be really fantastic to get more of her life in a full biography. And then my friend India got me The Blue Castle by Ellen Montgomery. You'll know that I previously have really enjoyed Anne of Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery and when I found out that this was a book about a woman turning 29 and feeling like she's so stuck with her life that she hasn't lived the life that she wants and this book is about her taking control of her life changing her life for the better. I was just like, I feel like this is a book that I must read. This is a book that has to be done this year. I've just heard that it's really heartwarming, really charming, and so I'm looking forward to reading this. I then got two beautiful books from my sister, my brother-in-law, and my niece. The first being A Lady's Guide to Scandal by Sophie Irwin. A couple of years ago I read her first book, A Lady's Guide to Fortune Hunting, which was a really sweet Regency romance, and it is a non-spicy romance for anybody who is looking for something that doesn't have the sexy terms. And so yeah, when I I found out that Sophie Owen had a new book coming out. I was very excited but I had held off but now that I have it in my hands I'm just like yes I want to read this straight away. Very different protagonist to our last book who was completely broke and looking to get married to pursue a fortune. Now she has a fortune but can she hold on to it? And then the other book that my sister picked out for me was Eyeliner A Cultural History by Zara Hankier. This was in one of my anticipated releases videos because as you can see I am a makeup wearer, I am an eyeliner wearer. One of the things that people always note about my makeup is the fact that I do wear eyeliner pretty much every time. I'm a big fan and yet I know nothing about the history of this makeup that I wear every day, almost every day, and so I just think this will be incredibly intriguing. I will let you know more thoughts. And then the final book that I picked up is one that I had been putting off for a few weeks. I'd been eyeing it in the shops and thinking I don't need you, I don't need you, I can wait until you're out in paperback. But when my friends from Musical Theatre Society gifted me a £25 gift voucher of book tokens, I just had to get it in hardback. Love and Marriage in the Age of Jane Austen by Rory Moore does exactly what it says on the tin. Looking at courtship, marriage, widowhood, spinsters and everything in between. Looking at the different conventions of love and marriage which would have influenced Jane Austen's writing and the society that she grew up and wrote in. I'm just so keen to read this one. I also saw Claire, Claire Fenby, picked this one up and when I saw that she had it I was like oh I want it. <laughs> Let's be honest I'm constantly being influenced by Claire and so on my birthday I had my voucher, I eyed it in the shop and I was like okay you are coming home with me finally and I don't know if I'm going to be able to hang on to this until Jane Austen July 
I think I'm going to want to pick this up a lot sooner than that. I am really having a bit of a moment with 18th century histories between this uproar and the blue stockings and I am very much enjoying it. I always say that I am an early modernist with the 17th century taken out. I love my Tudors, I love my Georgians and so you know why break a habit of a lifetime? So there we go that is my pile of birthday books. As definitely in terms of books I think 29 is shaping up to be a great reading gear. Do let me know if you've read any of the books that I have spoken to you about today. Alternatively let me know about anything that you would recommend that I pick up next. I would love to hear from you. I hope you're having a fantastic, fantastic day and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Bye!